Hypnosis is a safe and effective way to access the subconscious mind and change unwanted thought patterns. This can help you access creativity, enhance your natural abilities, and become more motivated. And these are just a few of the possibilities. But how do you use hypnosis to improve your memory? Hi, I'm clinical hypnotherapist Dr. Steve G. Jones. I'm here to share my knowledge of hypnosis with you, to help you change your life. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're here to improve your life, I'm here for you. How to use hypnosis to improve recall is a mystery to so many people. I'm here to tell you it's all about understanding the simple mechanics behind it. I'm going to show you what the clinical research tells us about the factors that affect hypnosis and how it can help you improve your ability to recall memories. But first, let's take a look at why we should be concerned with how hypnosis helps people improve their memory in the first place. Let's start by examining challenges with popular beliefs about hypnosis and memory. Did you know that most Americans have an incorrect understanding of hypnosis as it relates to memory? It's true. Many of my fellow Americans have beliefs that go against established scientific understandings of how memory and hypnosis are related. For example, a nationally representative sample survey of Americans showed that 55.4% of the United States population agreed that, quote, hypnosis is useful in helping witnesses accurately recall details of crimes. Unfortunately, that belief simply isn't correct. In fact, the opposite is true. Courts treat hypnosis-based recollections as untrustworthy. Although hypnosis can lead to more recall by witnesses, it does not lead to more accurate recall. Widely accepted beliefs about memory and hypnosis are not just interesting in their departure from decades of scientific research that disputes those beliefs, popular opinion has the ability to seep into many parts of our lives, and its influence over the use of hypnosis for memory improvement made this particular use of hypnosis extremely popular and widespread in post-war America. The importance of lay knowledge lies in its power to shape how we approach and study the psychological sciences. Many researchers agree that popular psychological beliefs, no matter how wrong, play an important role in defining and shaping psychological research. Even today, the influence of popular culture continues to impact the study of the science behind hypnosis and its ability to improve memory. In the scientific community, hypnosis is considered a relatively taboo topic due to its convoluted history. Because of this, relatively few psychologists and scientists study the link that inevitably exists between hypnosis and its ability to alter, construct, and define memories. As an example of the scientific community distancing itself from scientific applications of hypnosis, John F. Kilstrom, a Berkeley psychologist, carefully limited his definition of hypnosis. He called it, quote, a social interaction in which one person, called the subject, acts on suggestions from another person called a hypnotist for imaginative experiences involving alterations in cognition and voluntary action, end quote. There are, however, a few psychologists, researchers, and scientists who believe that hypnosis has immense potential beyond its ability to induce atypical experiential states. Unlocking this potential may provide significant insights into cognition, the brain, and working memory function. It's even possible that hypnotic research may have major implications for developing new methods to improve human learning and memory performance. So let's take a look at hypnosis and memory. According to my understanding, hypnosis is the induction of a highly focused state of consciousness in which a person is more responsive to suggestion or direction than they would be while not in hypnosis. This state can be achieved by the individual alone or with the help of another person, or even a hypnosis recording. Memory can be defined as the faculty by which the brain stores and retrieves information. Even though many people believe that memory works like a video camera, recording everything we see and hear so that we can simply play it back later, this belief is actually incorrect and is not supported by science. In fact, we now know that, quote, despite what many people believe, memory is not a repository of past experiences, but a dynamic mechanism that ensures the stability and coherence of the self across situations. Memories may be false when they are initially stored. They may also become false during repeated instances of retrieval and or may be corrupted by time, ensuing events, 
brain injury or trauma, a person's own sense of self, confidence about the memory, and many other factors. So, to sum up memory, the idea that our memories are perfect, unaltered representations of historical reality is incorrect. Hypnosis as a means of memory improvement and recall, known scientifically as hypnotic hypermnesia, became popular after World War II, when clinical and experimental hypnosis became widespread practices. Quote, from the 1950s through the early 1980s, hypnosis became increasingly popular as a means to exhume information thought to be buried within the mind. End quote. As audio and video recording devices were made more available for the public to purchase and use, the lay public's concept of a memory as a permanent, unalterable item fixed in the mind gained more acceptance. People began to believe that memories were stored just like audios and videos, as unalterable records of past events. This widely held, scientifically incorrect belief also encouraged psychoanalysts and therapists who believed hypnosis was the key to unlocking these unalterable, repressed, or unclear memories. This belief eventually led to two important developments in the history of hypnosis and memory improvement. The first being hypnotic age regression and recall, that is, the widespread phenomena of people getting hypnotized and then suddenly remembering fantastical events that may or may not have happened to them as a child. The second being forensic hypnosis, the practice of regressing subjects to a specific moment or event that they had witnessed in order to, quote, replay a memory of a crime. Let's take a closer look at these two key developments. The first development, the use of hypnotic techniques, including age regression to enhance recall of past events experienced by the individual, was primarily led by psychologists. Whitehouse and fellow researchers found no scientific evidence that hypnosis enhances accurate recollection of past events, but hypnosis does appear to increase false recollection. Hypnosis also increased the confidence that people felt about their ability to recall items without increasing their actual ability to recall the items correctly. It seems that hypnosis can create a suggestive atmosphere that interacts with memory reconstruction and retrieval to give people the illusion of correctly remembering. Psychologist Elizabeth Loftus went even further than that, saying that suggestion was the root challenge. She believed that the fundamental understanding of memory that underpinned the practice was wrong. Previous memory practitioners had likened memory to tape recordings and motion picture film, but Loftus used real motion pictures as a way of defining the standard of truth, figurative and literal, against which to measure eyewitness memories. Her test subjects viewed films of events, like a traffic accident, and were then questioned about what they remembered. Their reports proved to be full of errors. This study, among many others that she performed, served to illustrate the fact that the concept of memory, as it was culturally understood, was wrong, and that the very act of recollecting could change the memories. The second important event that occurred in the history of hypnosis and memory was the development of forensic hypnosis. Due to the challenging issues of false recollection and believed imaginings, forensic hypnosis had a fairly short lifespan in the legal field. Given the lack of scientific support, coupled with evidence for greater memory distortion with hypnosis, the majority of state supreme courts that have grappled with the issue of hypnotically elicited testimony have placed major restrictions on its admissibility in court. A lack of independent and objective cooperation proved to be a major factor in dismissing hypnotically induced testimonies as nothing more than suggested representations of memories and events. These two developments, hypnotic age regression and forensic hypnosis, were, by most measures, resounding failures and their significance continues to impact further scientific study on the subject today. But it gets even worse, as Lifshitz and fellow researchers summarize. Two important events in the late 20th century marred popular conceptions of hypnosis in relation to memory. The massive rise in DID, dissociative identity disorder, previously referred to as multiple personality disorder diagnoses, and the increasing interest in legal issues surrounding the use of hypnotically enhanced memories in court. Both of these events served to discredit hypnosis 
as a reliable recall tool. Now, let's take a look at scientific evidence about how hypnosis may actually help with memory improvement. By the way, if you want to experience hypnosis for memory improvement, then head on over to stevegjones.com forward slash memory and download the free one-hour hypnosis audio that I've recorded. That's stevegjones.com forward slash memory. Head on over there after this video. In recent years, there's been some important experimentation involving hypnosis and memory improvement. Nemeth and fellow researchers analyzed the connection between human learning and memory and how, in particular, hypnosis allowed for reduced engagement of the frontal lobe-mediated explicit attention processes, leading to improved performance in striatum-related procedural learning. In other words, they looked at how hypnosis can enhance our ability to focus on completing procedural or step-by-step -step tasks. It turns out that we use several parts of our brain when it comes to memory and learning, and they don't always work well together. As the researchers put it, human learning and memory rely upon multiple cognitive systems related to separable brain structures. These systems interact in cooperative and sometimes competitive ways in optimizing memory and information processing performance. Everything sounds good except for the competitive part. Different parts and processes in our brains competing against each other. So, they used hypnosis as a tool to reduce the competition between two types of systems. The first one being the frontal lobe-related explicit hypothesis testing system, and the second one being the striatum-related procedural-based system. The main question of the study was how the disruption of frontal lobe functions by hypnosis affects performance in procedural-based sequence learning. The study wanted to see if hypnosis impacts human attention processing enough to improve our ability to complete procedural tasks. They discovered that hypnosis may be able to help us complete these types of tasks by blocking some parts of the brain's attention system, eliminating the competition in other words, hypnosis may actually increase our ability to focus on procedural tasks. It may also affect how quickly or well we complete these tasks. The results of this study were impressive. Nemeth and his team found that hypnosis substantially boosted procedural-based sequence learning, meaning that with hypnosis, participants were able to learn how to complete step-by-step -step tasks more quickly and efficiently. This result sheds light not only on the competitive nature of brain systems in cognitive processes, but it could also have dramatic implications for developing new methods to improve human skill learning and to increase procedural-based memory functioning. It turns out that expectations matter in hypnotic research. Although the historical misapplications of hypnosis for memory improvement have tainted the image of hypnosis as a useful tool for evoking lost memories, new collective evidence shows that judicious use of hypnotic techniques can actually improve recall and decrease memory inaccuracy. People generally don't intend to, but instead subconsciously alter their actions to fit their idea of the experiment and its intentions. Both of these occurrences tend to skew the result of the experiment because participants are not acting naturally, but are instead doing what they believe they're supposed to be doing. A series of experiments by Wagstaff and fellow researchers demonstrated that instructing participants to expect that hypnosis will improve their ability to recall actually increased their resilience to misleading information and decreased their likelihood of false recall. This method works by educating subjects about the threat of false recall, which allows them to protect themselves against confabulation. That's false answers the mind creates to fill in memory gaps. These are not lies, by the way. And it does this throughout the hypnotic treatment. Measures such as these strengthen the possibility that hypnosis can be used as a safe and successful means of memory improvement. Another area in which hypnosis has shown potential is in improving the working memory performance of brain-injured patients. Working memory impairment is common in patients who have brain injury from a variety of causes and at varying degrees of severity. Lindelof and colleagues demonstrated that Quote, working memory performance can be effectively restored by suggesting to hypnotized patients that they have regained their pre-injury level of working memory functioning, end quote. Their experiment was designed to measure not only short-term effects, but also long-term functioning of the working memory. In both cases, the researchers found 
that the patient's memory had improved and began operating at or above the performance level of non-brain-injured people. Lindelov and fellow researchers concluded that, quote, if framed correctly, hypnotic suggestion can effectively improve working memory following acquired brain injury. The speed and consistency with which this improvement occurred indicate that there may be a residual capacity for normal information processing in the injured brain, end quote. These findings are merely the first step toward revolutionizing how rehabilitation programs are designed, but they are an encouraging sign that hypnosis is an overlooked resource when it comes to improving memory performance. There is still a lot of research that needs to be done in the area of hypnosis for memory improvement, and I'm excited to see where it will lead us. If you want to use hypnosis to improve your memory, you're not alone. That's why I've created a free memory improvement hypnosis MP3 download. Listen to it as you go to bed at night for three weeks and enjoy the changes. If you fall asleep while listening or skip a few nights, that's okay. Go to stevegjones.com forward slash memory to download it now. You'll be glad you did. And there you have it. Now you've seen and heard the research on hypnosis for memory improvement. Have you used hypnosis to improve your memory? How did it go? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'm also interested to see if anyone knows someone who has used hypnosis to improve their memory. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Steve G. Jones, hoping you have an outstanding day.